only son So that anyone who believes in him Should not perish but have eternal life for God Love the world in this way He gave his one and only son So that anyone who believes in him Should not perish but have eternal life Why don't you end So that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God Love the world in this way he gave his one and only son So that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life Why don't you end? So that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God Love the world in this way he gave his one and only son So that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life Who won't you? Hey guys, good morning and welcome to Refuge Church Nashville. I'm Pastor Mark Smith and it's my honor to worship with you, to share the Word of God with you uh, and to be with you each and every week. Now we are beginning a brand new series today I'm really excited about. It's called Good News, Great Joy. You know, I believe the world and I know my own heart personally, the world is looking for good news and we believe that just at the right time that God is sending some great news in the form of a baby in a manger and we're going to be able to celebrate that all month at Refuge Church Nashville. So please make your plans to share this message with other people. Please make your plans to not miss a Sunday. And if you miss it on Sunday morning, you can catch it any time of the week digitally. Now, I mentioned digitally because right now we are online only. Uh, we thank you so much for being here. We just felt like uh, with the, the climate of COVID in this season, it was the safest thing for our families, not judging any other churches and what they're doing, but for our church family and community, we made the decision to go digital right now. Um, so keep, uh, continue to uh, uh, connect with us because we don't know when we're going to be able to open up for in-person gatherings again. And we've got some plans for Christmas Eve as well, but we'll see how the weather is going to permit and so many other things. So continue, please. Uh, to connect with us, and thank you so much for participating with us today. I want to remind you that also we have tons of online resources at refugechurchnashville.com, Bible studies, testimonies in English and Spanish that you can enjoy, that you can continue to consume and to feed your heart and your soul in this, uh, in this unprecedented time. Um, so please continue to do that. Also, we would encourage you, if you can, if it's possible, to remain faithful to give to the mission of our church. Uh, you can give online by going to our website. There's a button that says give, and it shows you you can give by text. You can give online. Uh, there, uh, there are ways that you can do that. And if you cannot give online, but you still want to support the mission of our church, you can drive by on Mondays from 10 to noon, and there will be someone in our church offices to receive your tithe and offering. And guys, thank you once again so much for being a part of the mission of our church uh, to, to help all people from all nations experience the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, last thing I would say is that 
this information, other information that you might need is all available on our website at refugechurchnashville.com. I want to pray for us as we continue on. We're going to worship a little bit. We've got a special guest today and some other uh, friends are going to be a part of uh, our worship today. Let me pray for us and then we'll dive right back in. Thank you so much once again. God, we love you. We believe that your presence brings good news of great joy. God, I pray that we would be preparing our hearts to recognize that, to celebrate that, to see what you want us to see in the world around us. God, for those who are suffering today, for those who are so anxious that they can't even see straight, God, with so many things going on in the world around us, God, would you help us to focus on your goodness, help us to focus on your message for us today, and to help us to order our steps by your word. God, we thank you so much for this day. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, amen, amen.
lullaby till angels say Amen. A mother tonight is rocking a cradle in Bethlehem. By a wise man followed through the dark, a star that beckoned. Guys, once again, thank you so much for joining us at Refuge Church Nashville. And I would encourage you, we believe that there is encouragement and joy and hope in this message series. So would you consider helping us and multiplying that joy by sharing it on social media and leaving comments and just making sure people know, starting watch parties, whatever you need to do in order to share the good news of great joy during this Christmas season. Now, our theme verse is in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, and I want us to read that together. We're going to be unified, even online, even digitally. So find your Bibles, if you will. It's going to be on the screen behind me. But Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, I want us to read it together, and then we're going to jump back to Luke chapter 1 as we begin to prepare for the good news of great joy in this season. So here we go, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Read it aloud wherever you are. If you've got coffee on the, uh, uh, in the kitchen table, if you are in your bed right now, wherever you are, let's read this together. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. It says the following, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now listen, that is one of the one of the pivotal moments, one of the climax moments of the Christmas story. You've got the angels uh, singing. You've got the shepherds worshiping. The baby has been born. All this stuff. But we want to go back right now. We want to go back to Luke chapter 1 to see how the Lord wants to prepare us to prepare us really for the good news. And so we're going to look um, at Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 5 through 17. Um, Read along as I read aloud today. It says the following. 
In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statues of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness. I love that. You'll have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. May God bless the reading of his word today. Now, if you regularly watch, read, or listen to the news, you most likely believe that the world is diving into greater chaos and disaster each day. And let's be honest, we've all had our share of bad news this year, right? Now, research shows that a constant diet of negativity can impact us in unexpected ways. Over time, bad news can actually change how we think, how we filter the world around us. Some of us can't turn off the negativity in our minds. Others over-exaggerate. We hear news of bad economic stuff in Europe, and we begin to hoard and buy more toilet paper here in Tennessee, right? (laughs) Um, Some have listened to so much bad news that they've filtered out everything else. We only pay attention to bad news, and each negative story confirms our belief that everything is just bad. Now, we can all agree that the world could use some good news right now. The Christmas story is full of good news. And I use that word full because fulfillment is a huge part of the good news of Christmas. Luke 1, verse 1, begins with the author telling us that he wrote this gospel to compile all the things that God had accomplished or fulfilled among them. We encounter promises fulfilled, prayers answered. After Zechariah receives the good news that he will have a son, the angel says in verses 14 and 15, and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great before the Lord and he must not drink wine or strong drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Zechariah and Elizabeth will be filled with joy and gladness. Others will rejoice, it says. John will be so filled by God that he won't have to drink to get happy. Now, I'll sign up for that kind of joy and good news. Amen? How about you? God, where do we sign up for that kind of joy, that kind of filling in my heart and in my soul? Now, time out. Take a moment. Before we can receive this cup running over good news and joy we must prepare, okay? Preparation is another really important theme in the Christmas story. Each gospel mentions the story of John the Baptist, especially about him preparing the way of the Lord. uh, God sends John in the power and the spirit of Elijah to help prepare our hearts for good news. And before we can focus on what God's good news is, we must answer the question, 
are we really prepared to receive his good news? Are we prepared, think about it, are we prepared to receive the good news of God? Could we recognize good news if it was right in front of us? Luke tells us that God sent John to prepare us in three specific ways. And these three ways are practical, and they are habits that you can implement in your life beginning this week. Are you ready? Here we go. The first one that we see from the passage, it says, turn your hearts. Turn your hearts. The first way we can prepare for God's good news is to turn our hearts. Now, we, when we look at everything going wrong in our world, it's easy to conclude that everything in the world is just bad. It's hopeless. And hopelessness leads us to feelings of helplessness. In other words, if I believe that nothing is going to change or get better, then the world is not only hopeless, but I, I'm helpless. And this is why so many of us give up. We give up on the world. We give up on hope. We give up on anything changing around us. Luke 1, 16 and 17 tells us what to do to begin to see and recognize the good news of God. It says, and he will turn many of their children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Now, guys, when the angels spoke these words to Zechariah, they were actually a fulfillment of the words in the Old Testament in the book of Malachi. It's the very last book in the Old Testament. Now, Malachi 4 is really an interesting mix of doom and judgment as well as hope and promise, kind of like the world we're living in today where we're like, I really want to hope, I really believe, God, I know you're there, but I'm looking all around me at destruction and pain and sickness it's a little, it feels a little bit like today. Now look, Malachi 4, 5, and 6 gives light to the words of the angel uh, uh, in Luke. Listen to verses 5 and 6. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. Now, reading Luke chapter 1 in light of Malachi 4 gives us a clearer picture of what you and I can do to prepare for good news. Turn your heart. Turn your focus first to the Lord. Before looking at everything around you, really take the time to turn your heart and your attention to God. Guys, while salvation is free, our relationship with God requires work and attention and consistent turning because we are so easily distracted and disappointed by the world around us. Also, we must invest our time and affection in the most important relationships that God has provided in our life. Our friends, children, parents, other family. Guys, in 2020, most of us have grown more isolated physically, but also relationally with others around us. It's not just that we're physically distanced from others, but we feel relationally and spiritually alone. That's why last week when I was announcing that we were going back uh, to digital services only, I was at the point of tears, and I'm like, God, why in the world? I, I, I wasn't like that before I came up to announce it, but when it happened, it was because we all crave being with each other. We crave community. We, pray, we, we crave closeness and, I, and hugging each other and seeing each other's faces. That's just a part of church life, but it's a basic need of everyone in the world. And guys, what's interesting here, though, is while the ESV twice tells us to turn our hearts in the Spanish, in the NBI, um, it tells us, it uses the word reconcile. We are to reconcile our most vital relationships. So the question is, who do you need to reconcile with today? Don't just pass that by. Listen to that. Who do you need to reconcile with today? Is there someone important to you from which you've let sin or pain or discord separate you? Perhaps God is calling you to reconcile a really important relationship that you have with someone in your life. 
And what happens most times is we kind of reconcile the fact that I feel like I've done enough and I'm just sitting here and I'm waiting for someone else to reconcile with me. Um, Perhaps they wronged you and the ball is in their court, for example. According to Malachi, we all have the responsibility to reconcile or to get right with others. While God has done everything to reconcile with us, he doesn't just stop at what he did on the cross. Even though we don't deserve it, he pursues us. Later on in Luke chapter 15, he tells the story of of pursuing a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son. Now Malachi calls for fathers to turn to children, to children to reconcile with their parents. Your call to reconcile with others is stronger than who started it or who carries the blame. My calling from God is to turn my heart to Him, and to those, um, and really, my call to turn is greater than my personal sense of justice or what I think I deserve. And sometimes, as we well know, we try to reconcile with others, and they just don't respond. And even if they don't, you will have a greater sense of release and personal reconciliation when you turn your heart to God and you turn your heart to others. And here's the reality of what the practicality of what turning our hearts can do. Guys, one reconciled relationship is more powerful than a month of isolation. Peace with God is more valuable than your financial problems. A restored friendship is stronger than a hundred hateful rants on social media. When we turn our hearts to our most important relationships, life can be good even when the world looks bad. You will begin to recognize and hear good news because of the goodness in your most significant relationships. Turn your hearts. Turn your heart to God. Turn your hearts to your most important relationships and prepare for good news. Can I get an amen on that one? All right, now number two. Here we go. Number two. The second way that we prepare for good news is we focus on, on what we can fix. Focus on what you can fix. One side effect of hopelessness is inactivity. We don't do anything because we feel like nothing that we do will change anything. So we do nothing and our greatest fears are confirmed because there's no good news and no change in the world. Now we learn two important characteristics of Zechariah and Elizabeth in the Gospel of Luke that I want to remind you of. First of all, The first characteristic is that they're barren. They can't have kids. Verse 7 says the following. It says, but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now, guys, in any culture, in any age, infertility is devastating to couples who want to have kids. Feelings of hopelessness and blame often walk hand in hand with barrenness. And infertility, the Bible, in Bible times, the despair of barrenness probably ran deeper because medicine couldn't provide any solutions or any answers to them. The barrenness was also worsened with time. Luke points out, very respectfully, that they were advanced in years. That means they were really old at this point, right? Time was a cruel reminder of their hopelessness. And this brought a greater finality to their situation. They were barren with no hope of anything to change, right? But it also tells us another important characteristic, number two, that not only were they barren, but they were blameless. Go back one verse and look at verse six. It says, and they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statues of the Lord. Zechariah served most of his life as a priest in Judah, and Elizabeth faithfully served by his side. In the scriptures, being blameless doesn't mean being perfect and holy. It means that you were dedicated to holiness. It means that you were known for your pursuit of God. It's even emphasized in Elizabeth's name, which means dedicated to God. They were blameless because they, were faithfully, because they faithfully served God beyond their desires, beyond their disappointments, beyond their frustrations. They were examples of faith in God, even when God didn't seem faithful at the moment. They couldn't change their barrenness, but they could continue to live and to serve blamelessly. 
Now, in preparation for the good news, the angel says that John will come in the spirit of Elijah to turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Now, let's talk about that turning uh, the disobedient for just a minute. Turning the disobedient may begin with our own uh, uh, disobedience. Uh, As we turn to God and as we reconcile with others, we must also order our steps. Order your life, your work, and your relationships by the word of God. Be dedicated to creating spiritual margins in your life in order to listen to God. And to be honest with you, sometimes we can't hear the good news because our lives reflect the chaos and the confusion of the world around us. And when the world seems out of control, a very practical step that I believe uh, is connected to this passage of Scripture, when the world seems out of control, focus on what you can fix. Focus on what you can do. Maybe you can't change the world, but you can change one of your own habits. You can be faithful to what God has called you to do, even if the future is uncertain. Ask God to order your life and your steps, not only for you, but also as an example for others. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I got something in the mail. It was a gift. It was a really um, special gift because it was someone from someone in our congregation. Uh, Riza Rosti, who many of you have seen his testimonies um, in the month of November, he sent me, are you ready for this? His very first book that he wrote. It's called Grace Upon Grace by Riza Rosti. And we'll put, uh, we'll put on Facebook and other places ways that you can uh, find this book or buy it if you want to read it uh, or give it to someone uh, for the holidays. But what I was blown away with was as I was thinking about it, I'm, think, I'm thinking, man, so many of us have learned to eat more, have learned to binge uh, my, you know, meaningless uh, programs on Netflix this whole time. And here's someone during the quarantine that wrote and, and published a book. And it just reminded me, this is not necessarily called for all of us to write a book, but maybe that we can do more to fix our own world rather than just focusing on the hopelessness of the greater world around us. Maybe God is calling us to be an example of good news for others. While many of us were watching Tiger King, Reza is writing a book on the grace of God. That that, kind of tells you where we are, right? Now, this is what Luke means by guiding the disobedient by the wisdom of the just. This means that we should be guided not only in, in primar- or, or firstly so much so by the scriptures, but also by the example of others. While Zechariah and Elizabeth, uh, like, like them, your world may seem barren, but you can still walk blamelessly. Focus on what you can fix and be an example of good news to others. All right? So turn your hearts Focus on what you can fix. And the last one today, if you're writing this down, and once again, all these notes are on our app, and you can download the app if you don't have it on our website, and we'd love for you to follow along in the notes as well. The third point is this. Change your spiritual channel. Change your spiritual channel. Now, I'm going to show my age here for just a minute uh, because my kids don't, they, they can't even imagine what it was like um, to live with only three channels uh, of TV. Uh, most of you who are listening today, you can't even imagine. And when we got um, the fourth channel, man, it was like gold for us. I remember when we only had four channels. Can you imagine that? No internet, no video games, no downloads, no streaming on demand. And while my kids see program designed for them, anytime they want to see it, we only had three hours of kids programming a week. Do you, does anybody remember that? It's just me. We had three hours of kids programming a week, and it was always on Saturday morning, and you had to get up because that was the only time that TV was just for you as a kid. Now, more than ever, media and news exist to keep you watching and to tell you and let you see exactly what you want to see. Everything is customized and personalized based on, based on what you want to see and when you want to see it. And we believe that God is good and that he still brings good news. Therefore, if we can't hear or recognize his news in my life, then it may be time to change our spiritual channel. And while the world will tell you what you want to hear, God will tell you what you need to hear. Even when God's news seems bad, it's always for his good purpose. 
And God's news is always for our good. But we must change our spiritual streaming service in order to hear it. So how do we change our spiritual channel? This is going to rock your world. You've probably never, ever, ever heard this before. Are you ready for it? Here's how we change the spiritual channel of our lives. Pray daily and often. Pray daily and often. I think that's one of the things during this quarantine and during this time of pandemic this year, this probably is one of the greatest things I believe that the church has missed is that we have not allowed this crisis, this world crisis, to deepen us in the discipline of praying, praying daily and praying often. I had never noticed how much of the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth emphasizes the importance of prayer. And I want to show you how it does this. Luke 1, 9 says that Zechariah offered incense in the temple when he heard the good news of God. All right, so he's offering incense and he receives the good news. Luke also carefully mentions that the angel gave him this news while standing at the right side of the altar of incense. Now, what does that mean? Incense has a really specific symbol in the scriptures that I want to show you. David in the Old Testament wrote in Psalm 141, or verse 2, he says, Let my prayer be counted as incense before you. So there's the connection between prayer and incense. And Revelation 5.8 says that the elders, in this celestial uh, kind of vision, It says that the elders were around the throne holding golden bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So Zechariah is offering incense to God. The angel is standing by the altar of incense with good news. And the people are outside lifting up prayers to God in verse 10. And if you missed, if somehow you didn't connect this, um, this really important connection between uh, prayer and incense and the, and the symbolism behind that, the angel reminds Zechariah in verse 13, he says, your prayer has been heard. Now, unfortunately, we often see our prayer life like streaming services. We choose when we want to connect and we watch what we want to see. And yes, the Bible does encourage us to lift up our petitions, our desires, our prayers, our thoughts to God. But let me tell you, prayer is equally about listening to him and adjusting my life to his purposes. And what the scripture reminded me of, and and there's, there's themes of reconciliation throughout this that we've already discussed, turning our hearts to God, turning our hearts to one another. The way we solidify that is through the act of prayer. And I want you to think of prayer today as the daily reconciliation between you and God. Prayer is daily reconciliation between you and God. Now, guys, while we are eternally reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, when I receive Christ as my Lord and Savior, I am eternally reconciled to him. But my daily relationship with God requires regular turning, regular prayer, regular adjustments. While the world waits for the next bad report, God comes to us with news of mercy and grace. Our prayer life prepares us to receive God's good news. The angel announced that John would come in the spirit of Elijah to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Guys, you will never receive his good news if you can't hear it and if you can't see it. That preparation starts with prayer. Changing the spiritual channel of your life and daily reconciling with God. And so I want to focus on that last scripture that I just read. He says, John will come in the spirit of Elijah to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. So the question is, are we prepared to receive God's good news? Are we, are we prepared to receive what God wants to show us and, and have a, us experience? I want to remind you once again, turn your hearts to God. Turn your hearts also to the most important relationships that God has provided in your life. And life can be good 
even when the world around us looks bad. Also, focus on what you can fix, especially when the world seems out of control. Be faithful and be an example to others. And once again, prepare to receive God's good news through changing the spiritual channel of your life. Practice daily reconciliation with God in prayer. I pray that we would prepare ourselves to receive some really good news in this holiday, in this Christmas season. I pray that beyond the, the, the consistent news cycle that we get in the world around us, that we will begin to see and to hear God in a brand new way during this Christmas season. Let me pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. And thank you for providing some really practical ways that we can begin to kind of reboot our relationship with you and others and to begin to filter out other things and to truly see the good news that you have for us. God, you are so good. God, I will personally say and ask for forgiveness for ways that I have been distracted and discouraged and I really haven't been able to see the good news that's maybe even been right in front of me. God, would you turn our hearts towards you? Would you give us the courage to reconcile with those around us? God, would you help us to practically focus on what we can fix, what we can order, what we can do to change a habit or our personal lives, even when we can't change the world. We'll leave that in your hands, God. And God, would you give us the impulse to reconcile with you daily in prayer? God, help us to be a people prepared through prayer and through devotion. God, help us to listen to you today in this world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Also, if you're here listening today and you've, um, you've never really received God as your Lord and Savior uh, through Jesus Christ, you, you've heard some things, maybe uh, God has sparked something in your heart and in your mind today, and for the first time you'd like to receive uh, Christ as your Lord and Savior, I, I don't want to miss that opportunity with you today to do that. Let me tell you, the Word says that God sent His Son to reconcile us back to Him. And so God has already done everything necessary to do that, and He's just knocking on the door of your heart and waiting for you um, to open up that door and to receive the forgiveness and the salvation that only comes through Jesus Christ. So if you'd like to do that with me today, right now, would you pray with me today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I recognize um, that I am in need of reconciliation with you. I understand that I'm a sinner uh, and that the good news really isn't for me until I receive you as my Savior. That's when good news begins. And so God, right now, I confess to you that I'm a sinner and I ask you to save me. I ask you to heal me, forgive me of my sin. God, I pray that you would create a new heart in me. I declare for the first time that you are Lord of my life, and I believe that you have the power to save. Thank you for saving me today. It's in Jesus' name I pray guys. Thank you so much for being a part of Refuge Church Nashville. And as we share the good news this season with you, we would love it if you shared your good news with us. So if at any time you've made a decision maybe to receive Christ as your Savior, or if you have a prayer request, leave that in the comments either on Facebook or YouTube, or you can go to our website at refugechurchnashville.com. And on the front page, there's a button that says, uh, we want to hear from you. Click that button, leave a comment, and we'll get back to you. We'll be praying for you. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for being with us today.